uh, Tuesday talk, we were bringing ideas on how to grow your business and how to stay out of trouble, you know, hot topics. And obviously, there's just the one hot topic right now, and that's the COVID. And what are you guys doing? What should we be doing? What shouldn't we be doing? And then what's happening? And I told you that I would keep you guys surprised at the market because everyone's interested in the market. I mean, yes, this is a stay at home. We want to get this thing stopped as quick as we can and not pass this around and, you know, make this even worse than it is. But there's still people who are in need of selling, buying, and they're still doing it. And obviously, this thing has been ramping up. Yeah. So, you know, people put an offer on a property, you know, a month ago are now closing or they were just, you know, about ready to write it off. So, you know, we're, we're still seeing those closings that started before we thought that this was really bad. Um, if you remember, it's been less than a month that we had our sales meeting and in the sales meeting we thought about maybe canceling it and that was just at the beginning of this. Just the cost of everything. Yeah. And, and we asked you guys in the meeting, what do you guys think we're all going, I don't really, we're not even a month into this and now it's like, oh, are you kidding me? Of course you want to do that. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> there's no group of events yeah. where you think it. So, yeah, things have moved very quickly. And we just want to keep you guys apprised of how is that affecting the market. And this is good information to share with your friends, your, your, your acquaintances, your database. Everyone's concerned about the stock market. Mm -hmm. Everyone's concerned about their savings. Uh, and where is the greatest savings, but it's in your home. What's happening with values? Are people still buying? Are they still selling? Then obviously, everyone's concerned about their health. Yes. Um, so we just want to keep you guys surprised and just let you know, I, I, again, I, I don't have any predictions. I, I, I do know that we had a crazy great January and February, and we were going into this year uh, guns of blazing, and it was going to be amazing. And then this happened, and I have no idea how it's going to affect it. Um, if this does end in a month or two, there's a very good chance that it comes roaring back. Mm -hmm. If so, I, I don't know. I gotta say, we're just going to keep you of what's happening. Yeah, real time, what's happening, what the market stats are, so that you guys can share that with the people that are asking you, "How's the housing market doing?" And you don't have to say, "Well, I don't know." Right. You actually have. The data to really. And we were just going to share just our company data because that's easy for me to come up with. And then we figured out, oh, our okay, Colorado is a very easy way to do data too. And so uh, we stepped up a little bit. I'll, I'll share numbers quickly though with just our, our office. So this isn't statewide, this is just our office. Um, January, February, and March is almost over. Um, we are at 234 closings so far this year. Last year, um, at the end of March, we had 195. So we're so we, we were. I mean, we're up 29 transactions, uh, and, that, and that's a good amount because this is usually the first quarter is usually the slowest quarter. Um, so we were on track for just a, a, an amazing yes. year, and we I think we still have a great year. Um, this month, last year we sold or closed 88 transactions. We're at 78. And we've got today still, so I don't, I don't have the final month uh, numbers. Yesterday we had seven closings, so we, we could still be on track, but we know we're going to see a drop off. Yeah. And how do we know? Because we're looking at the already Colorado numbers, and these are these are interesting. So yeah, so I will grab these. I made some notes um, just so I can pass all of this information along to you guys. So I'm just going to give you kind of round numbers. Because um, if I start rattling off all these four digit numbers, your eyes are going to pop out of your head. But we oh, are. Oh. Go the ahead. flyer. So that you don't have to write this down. You don't have to write this down. So we are compiling an email that will go out every single Tuesday following the Tuesday talk, and it has charts and graphs. And you probably saw the one come out last week. Um, I think it hit like Thursday because it took us a little while to get the template up. So now we have the template in place. Parker already made the graphs from yesterday. I just need to write a little summary and then it's going to hit your email inbox with all of these numbers, the summary that I'm giving you, um, plus all of the charts and graphs. So, so 
Just listen, just listen. take it in, and then we'll send you out uh, the document later today. Exactly. So this is for a seven-day snapshot. We're doing Monday to Monday. So these numbers are Monday, March 23rd through yesterday, Monday, March 30th. So new listings that hit the market in that seven-day period, 1,300. 1,300 new listings hit the market. And this is in RE Colorado. This is not statewide. This is all the data in RE Colorado. The boundaries of RE Colorado. Uh, yes, yeah. the boundaries of RE Colorado. Because yeah, Katie Martin asked that last week. Mm -hmm. Where is that? This is, yeah. So to give you a feel of how that compares to this time last year. So last week, 1,300 units. Last week, a year ago, same time frame, 1,800 units. Hmm. So we're down about 500 listings compared to the same time last year. So that was a 28% decrease. Right. Which could be market, mm -hmm. could be COVID, but, but it is what it is. But it is what it is. So we're going to have a tight market as far as inventory. Yes. Exactly, which makes it that much harder for your buyers because their inventory is going to be significantly lower. So before you guys jump to conclusions on, oh my gosh, is this COVID driven, just to give you um, some perspective, sales between 2017 and 2018 were down, or excuse me, listings were down 18%. So we may be down 28% compared to last year, yeah, but between 17 and mm -hmm. 18, we were down 18% on new listings. So I can't tell if it's the inventory crunch that we've right. been experiencing, or if this is maybe sellers saying, hey, I kind of want to wait to stay at home. I mean, it's got to be some stuff. So, I mean, yeah. we know. I mean, we hear it from you guys saying, they're going to hold off, they're going to wait. So we know, we know yeah. it's driven by the buyers. Go what percentage? Go what percentage? We also know, though, it's not dead. No. There's still 1,300 in one week. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking to you guys on the phone daily with questions. I've got a buyer. I've got an offer. I've got a listing coming on the market. I mean, you guys are busy with essential moves. Buyers and sellers that need yes. to make this happen. Essential. Essential. So not yeah, tired. I, I, just, I, don't, yeah, I don't want people thinking, hey, Todd's just trying to drive the market and go, 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 guys. And no. Things are good and just, you know, full steam ahead. No, no. Um, social distancing, you know, do what we can, stay, stay in. But the world hasn't stopped. There are still people with issues. There's still people that have to sell. There are still people that have to buy. And those are the people you're, you're helping. Not, again, I mentioned this on our, uh, our uh, Zoom meeting the other day, um, our social help those that are in need but you're not trying to you know help somebody relocate here who's thinking of someday moving to Colorado and can show me the area. Never yeah. We're not doing that. Those people have back burner. Yeah that's back burner. That's right. They can wait till June July. Alright so our listings are down 500 units compared to this time last year. 28%. 28%. That's what you take away from that. So pending sales are also down a touch. So we've got 1,400 units that went pending last week. Compared to last year, same time, there were 1,700 pending units. So down yeah. about 18%. Down 18%, yeah. okay. So we're down 18% on pendings and we're down 28% on listings. Okay. There we go. Closed transactions, because a lot of these buyers were already in their purchase agreement right. before this all hit. So closings, um, we had 1,400 units closed in Army Colorado last week compared to 1,700 units that closed last year, 2,100 units that closed the year before. So wow. we're actually down 20% from 2018 to 2019, down 19% hmm. from this year compared to last year. So we've seen a decline in closings. But it's not the lack of buyers, it's the lack of listings. It's the lack we don't of listings. We still don't have the inventory. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, to give you some perspective on how the stay-at-home order affected the showings, um, I think you guys have all done a great job of embracing only critical buyers, only critical sellers, because showings are actually down 63% compared to this time last year. 
And as of March 16th, our showings were, if you look at showing time has a daily chart that you can go and look at. And in March, our showings were actually up compared to last year. March 16th, we hit this intersection and ever since yeah, they've been going down. So I think that, you know, kudos to you guys because you're able to disseminate and decipher the information of this is not an urgent showing, I'm not scheduling it, this is an urgent showing, I'm scheduling it. So showings are down um, pretty significantly. Yeah, that's interesting. But people are doing it in different ways. Yeah. They're video using tours. Zoom, to doing video tours. Uh, I mean, FaceTime, so many of us just have an iPhone and it's easy to, you know, between the two of you use FaceTime. Um, Instant Messenger, my sister and I, she doesn't have that, she's an Android on an iPhone, but we use Facebook, uh, the Instant Messenger for video chatting. So there's so many ways to do that. And yeah, I think that's what people are having to do. And, yeah. and, and they're moving forward. I mean, people know what they're looking for. And when they're working with a good agent, here's your value again. Your value is that you guys, you can go look at the property by yourself and have the seller not be there and you can show up with your gloves and, and stay away from things and clean up after yourself you know wipe down the door or whatever and and do a, a you know while you're there it's one thing taking pictures and video but while you're there talking to your customer and showing them around and, and frankly the, the place that we're in right now stacy and i did just recently buy this and we were nervous it was Closing uh, a week and a half ago, we had an opportunity to back out if we wanted to because of inspections. And honestly, we were nervous. What, what should you do? And then you, you step back and you think, long term. Long term. This was our goal to get um, a vacation place in Tucson because you guys all know we come here a lot during the, the winter. Um, so now we got our vacation place for the rest of our life. And had we backed out, we would have been kicking ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of your clients are still in that position too, going, they want to move forward. They don't, they might take a small pause or, or rethink about it, but they don't have to change their entire five or 10 year plan. So, uh, but there's going to be angst. And <laughs> I can tell you the agent that we had working for us over here, we put her through some angst and some pies and uh, that we teach you guys. Go back to what was the purpose? What made you start looking? What made you? So those of you that are maybe having deals that are uh, falling apart or something like that, mm -hmm. reassure them what their decision process was that led them to where they are mm -hmm. and, and help them through because uh, most likely they'll be very appreciative that they moved forward and bought what they wanted. Yeah. Again, this is stuff that's already in the works. Going and finding some of their dream home right now or a second home right now, uh, that's not a priority. <laughs> that's not a priority. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it's take care of yourself and take care of your friends and family and, and the community. So, mm -hmm. But now, I um, do appreciate how well you guys are doing with your listings. I know um, some of you are having your sellers open all the doors, all the mm -hmm. cabinets, all the closets, so buyers can literally just walk in and not have to touch a thing. Um, so you guys are adapting really, really well. And I wish we had the ability to do a screenshot because I would love to show what Eileen has created as her marketing piece um, that she showed us during uh, our Friday yes. half hour. And um, we'll have to throw that well, out. Yeah, we'll get her permission. Yeah. yeah, showing how you guys are adapting with your marketing and supporting your clients and making sure that people know that you are a, a resource and you're there for them. Um, so yeah, she's doing some pretty unique things, which is fun. So what do we do? I guess that was that thing. Yeah. Now, um, we don't want to stop growing our businesses, working our businesses, and, and just sit around until we get through this. Um, but yeah, you want to be responsible. But you want to be responsible. So yeah, growing your business doesn't mean you have to be putting people in your car and selling houses today. It doesn't mean you have to be listing today. But growing your business or building your business means putting things into place, yeah. being ready for the right time. And the right time will come soon, or then later. Yes. It, it may not feel like it right now, because <laughs> I still think of our sales meeting that was less than a month ago. I know. And it feels like it's been- That was only the 13th. That was like two weeks ago. And I feel like we've been riding <laughs> this thing for like 45 yeah. days now. I'm like, oh my God. You can see 
we don't have a lot of patience as Americans because, yeah, but well, we're only two years into this thing. Are we yeah. So, Are we so building your business does not mean you have to be selling houses today. No. It means preparing. It means uh, we're, we're going to post what Eileen put together. It, it's, what's, your, what's your new strategy? What's your new value proposition and how are you going to promote that to your, your sphere of influence and show them that you're a trusted advisor? That's all we are always doing. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to show them that we're a trusted advisor, that we're the local market expert, and that we can help them get through tough times, tough strategies, tough transactions, and, and get them to the other side. So how do you step back and look at your current business and what you're doing and just make little tweaks. We're not talking, you know, blow it up what you're doing. So one thing I want to interject, yes. I love Vicki Hofer. Um, she sent out to all of her sphere a vendor list. And I don't know if she pulled it from our equity vendor list or a bunch of trusted contractors that she has because people are spending more time in their homes and they're realizing, oh, there's a plumbing leak. Oh, there's, you know, a cracked tile in the bathroom, we better get that fixed. And so she sent out this resource list that people now have trusted contractors that they can call when they're able to get people in their homes to make all these repairs. I thought that was a great idea. No, that is a great idea. And delivering a lot of value. Yeah, so yeah, right there. People are sitting at home. Noticing and, and all noticing these things that are wrong. And, and they're ready to do checklists for when I'm able to get back out there and the yeah. things that I want to have done. It'd be nice to get the landscaping done. Oh, honey, what would you do? Let's come up. So yeah, I've been doing this. Yeah. And you may be utilizing things in your house a little more right now because you are home 24 seven and something might break your water heater, your furnace, your, and so now you've got that list um, right on your refrigerator from your handy dandy trusted realtor uh, for those emergency repairs as well. So, so just a nice little- Take the vendor list off of the Facebook page that you guys are on right now, mm -hmm. go to file, partner updates that thing all the time. So, you know, it, it, it's very current. You can either, either just use that or make your own, or make your own branded. branded. Um, but great idea. So again, business building ideas. So when we're through this virus and people are chomping at the bit and want to get out there, you want to have been in front of them with useful information. What's going on in the market? It's okay. Reassuring them, sending them a vendor list. Now pick up the phone. I, I, I saw that on the news last night that yeah. we're not texting as much, we're calling. And, and this is not the Brian of being, hey, do you know anyone who's thinking about no. no. It's, hey, how are you? How are you? And, and, and just talking to people and having nothing to do with real estate. Mm -hmm. It's just your friends and family and sphere and business associates. And, and frankly, call Parker. Mm -hmm. Call Paul. Call Paul. Yeah, they're at home. Uh, we all need we that all interaction. Need we all that. need that support. And we're all struggling yeah. in our own way. Whether it be, I don't have a consistent routine. I'm not getting to see people face to face like I normally do. So we're all in it together. Yeah. So business building is reaching out to people. Yeah. That's it. Letting people know you're there. Yeah. As a person. Yeah. They need a shoulder. If they need someone to talk to. If they need a Zoom meeting. If they need a social. Um, if they need adult interaction with someone other than their kids or their spouse. Um, that's that's the kind of stuff you want to offer. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so I didn't have any huge. Oh, this is how we're gonna build our business or recover our business no. when we're through this. No, it was only about making connections. Make connections. Yeah. Talk to people. Don't hide. Yeah, don't hide. It makes you feel better too. Yeah. To reach out to those people. You get off the phone and you're like, oh, I feel better. I yeah. feel lighter. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And I think oh okay. No, I and I was just gonna say, when if you do a current transactions, there are easier ways to do them too. Um, we're overloaded with emails as you guys are. We're trying to keep you updated enough, but not overwhelmed. I mean, we got stuff from NAR and CAR and from this land title. Oh, I think everyone knows that 
there's remote ways to do this. There's ways to close your transactions that are currently under you know contract without having to get together. We're figuring all that stuff out. So um, yeah, if you haven't figured it out, just just give us a call. Um, us posting, reposting, and reposting. I, I, I think it's overwhelming. So I'm trying not to repost everybody's stuff out there because I mean we all have plenty of time to sit at home and read our emails right now. So yeah. I don't need to do that again. Exactly. Um, so the other thing I was going to hit on as far as business building is it's a great time um, to take those CE classes, maybe take that negotiating class that you've been wanting to take. And you um, see this, a lot of those are free right now. Yeah, we posted that yesterday. Please read the weekly update. There, that was a great weekly update yesterday, if I might, must say so. <laughs> Just a lot of good information, but yeah. CE. Sit at home and take some CE. Uh, Work on those checklists um, and systems that you have. Maybe you don't feel quite as organized as you would like to. And when all of this passes, you're going to have your clients, you know, back out, listening and buying, and you're going to feel overwhelmed because you don't have those systems in place. Sit down and make your little checklist, make your to-do list, organize your home office, get your files um, all set up on your computer. Make sure you've taken your CTM classes so that you know how to navigate the system. There's just a lot of little behind-the-scenes stuff that you can do that's going to make you that much more efficient. Yeah, and if you've been doing the right things all along, meaning you've been staying in touch with people all along, you've been writing note cards all along, you've been sending out monthly monthly newsletters all along or the magazine, you're doing the right things, and when we get through this, the right things will happen. So when you have a downtime, whether it's forced or not forced, forced right now, Take the downtime to, as Stacey says, just reorganize, kind of regroup, and not freak out about how we're going to you know, pay our bills in August or September. That will take care of itself if you've been doing the right things all along. There's going to be a pause. Uh, right now, we're at about a 28, 30% pause. It's not a stop. Mm -hmm. it's no, we have not hit so, the breaks. Yeah, uh, I, I think you'll all be fine, but take the time right now to. If, if you haven't been writing note cards, if you haven't been sending out a monthly newsletter, this is the time to go on to our market center and learn how to use the market center. It's so easy. We have videos on how to do it. Learn how to create a good newsletter uh, and send one out. Um, if you haven't been writing note cards, what better time than writing note cards right now? Just mm -hmm. sit Speaking to people. Your yeah, how are you guys doing? You know, how are you guys coping? Well, our, our niece just got back from Australia. That was mm -hmm. quite a little deal. She's now in quarantine for 14 for days. 14 days because she came from Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we need to write a note card. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and her family is yeah. struggling because when she, she came home, you know, when you have a child, you want to run and give them a hug. And they can't do yeah. that for her. And so they're just. Hi, oh. 14 days from now, we finally get to hug you. And she's been gone um, long time. She's been gone a couple of years. years. Yeah. So, yeah. But there's just, yeah, little things like that that you can acknowledge. I'm so glad that your daughter is home. I know these next 13 days are going to be a struggle not being able to interact, but I'm glad that she's safe and that you guys are healthy. Yeah. Things like that. So, it's, it's the perfect time. Uh, we have a forced downtime. Yeah to get your business in order, to reorganize, rebrand, rethink your value proposition, reach out to those that you care about that you just haven't had time because they're always so busy, but we got lots of time now to just reach out and just say hi to people. Um, and as Stacey said, it'll make you feel good too. It'll make them feel good and you'll feel better. Um, the other thing that I started doing this week is I've really been struggling with structure in an unstructured world. Yes. And, um, and normally I print out my daily to-do list, which I advocated for this darn today. And you've been still with that for and so I long. I print it out and every night I sit down and I write my to-dos and I found that I was putting too much on the list. What I used to put on my list um, in normal times, I could get done. And now I'm filling up that to-do list and I'm finding I'm paralyzed and I'm not getting anything accomplished. So instead of putting my three tasks here, three tasks here, three tasks here, I'm taking one thing and I'm saying, this is the one business item I'm going to complete today. 
and I can get one thing done. So whatever that one thing is for you, pick it. And in the morning, be diligent about getting that one thing done. And it might be one phone call, it might be one note card, it might be researching the online class that you're gonna take Friday, um, but do one thing and you will feel so much better because I was waking up just completely overwhelmed and I felt really scattered. Like I was trying to do all these things during the day and I just wasn't getting them done. And now that I'm doing one thing, hmm. I feel accomplished. We should have just made that, this whole thing about that. That's, yeah, one thing. One and thing. we are hearing from you guys that you're overwhelmed and paralyzed. Yes. And, and yeah, so yeah, get one thing. And so I'm trying to do that in the different areas of my life. One business thing, one personal thing, one relationship thing, um, one pet thing. My goal is to take the dog for a, for a walk. My goal is to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with my husband without my iPhone in my hand and checking my messages. <laughs> my one-on-one one quality yes. time without the phone. Time the phone without the distractions. Um, my one thing for business is to get these charts and graphs out to you guys with a good summary that you can then post for your clients. My one thing for me is to go for a run today, whether that's 10 minutes, whether that's 30 minutes, and so pick in all these different areas your one. Um, and maybe that'll help you because it's helped me mm -hmm. in the last couple of days. That's <laughs> great. I haven't been doing this. I mean, I, I randomly do that, but I'm, I'm not writing it down. Yeah, I like purposefully. That. I like purposefully. Because, yeah, we do all feel a little just yeah. off. Just off. Yeah, and my yeah. attention is going in a lot of different directions. The email yeah. that the title company just sent out about online no reviews and, you know, the email that you got from Car and the email that I. Yeah. So, yeah, I just feel like I'm grasping. And so, yeah, I don't know if anybody else is struggling with that, but hopefully that.